Hello everybody, Jet here, and welcome back to my, uh, my Bloody Hands Orc campaign. So, we are now, uh, well, we were clearing through Barakvar, but Barakvar have confederated with the dwarfs now, so, uh, we are going to be pushing down into the, uh, dwarf lands properly next, when, well, we're going to be finishing off where Barakvar were and recapturing some of our old territories, including Karak Ake Peaks over the next few turns. Right, where do I want to up? Daggerate Green Prophet next. So we can up the charge of our Savage Orc Cavalry units. Um, ammunition for artillery. Ammunition for infantry. Or we can do Tunnel Boss. Um, I'm not fussed by e any of them, really. Um, I'm going to buff up his hit points. Do you know? I know he's not really a melee lord, but I'm going to buff up everything here. Because I've got... I've got nine. We're right. So, uh. So we'll have nine after this. So, uh, for one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. But upping damage is always good. The issue is he is rather low on HP. So, we'll up his weapon strength. We won't bother with Deadly Blade. And we will push up Scarred Veteran as well. Because having extra HP is always very beneficial because it keeps you it keeps you alive for longer. I could go for a cheaper army for him as well, actually, which is the other thing I could do, is I could just uh go down the blue route and um so a minus 15% upkeep, which would actually be quite good on this army, because 15% of that is quite a lot of money, but uh I'd prefer to make him a little more survivable actually, so. Okay, so, the Goblin Big Boss, let's up his weapon strength here, because that's a big chunk of extra weapon strength I get. And let's end turn. So this little Dwarven army is going to be running away. We've got these two bits to push against here, and obviously we've got now got a hard border all the way along here. Now, I might start building myself up another little army, a little defensive army, or what we might do is we might break off one of our lords just to raid around here. And that way, if the uh, if the dwarves do come in at all, I've got the opportunity to turn around and pick them off as they go. Um, now, I am even though I've got a hard border here, I'm gonna I, I ideally want to keep my armies together because this area here, I mean Karakazel, that faction is called Karakazel, so I think Karakazel is going to be kind of powerful. That's gonna be that is gonna be their main territory, and there you go. That's what I was expecting, and I'm completely out of position to really do much about that now. So I need to start sprinting an army over there and bringing up another army as well, um, while the rest of my guys push into the dwarves. I your message to work. Uh, I'll tell you what, I will give them military access, because I want military access, and anything which will help them stay alive helps me, actually. Because obviously they are at war with the dwarf, so having them helping me is a beneficial thing, guys. Because uh, you know any any damage they can do to any of the dwarf factions only helps me. I am unfortunately I'm I'm out of position really now to deal with that other thing. So who are we going to sprint over to deal with this army? Grimgor is going to start sprinting over here at full speed. Now we've got a good garrison here. We've got good garrisons here, actually. But but this army could definitely take them. So we've got orc war bosses as well as night goblin war bosses. Now obviously orc war bosses are more expensive. Um, and are just straight up generally better. But they don't do poison. Um, so, fleet footed, so that's. Uh, minus free obedience, enemy product. No, weapon master, straight extra weapon damage. Oh, we can get goblin shamans as well to lead the armies, that's interesting. However, for now, we're going to go for an orc war boss. The weapon master. He can grab a war boar straight away, actually. And he can end up on a wife and long run, which is really quite cool. Um, oh, I thought I went down Root Marcher as well. 
Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start pumping out some cheap units. So actually, Gobbo Fanatics are... They're a nice cheap unit, but they're not quite as good as... So which are better? Again, the Orcs are straight up better. And let's grab a Rock Lobber. I'm also going to grab the Crim da Crimson Killers as a uh, regiment of renown for these guys. And get themselves the uh, Hammer of Gork. So a really powerful buffed up Rock Lobber. Which, uh, as you can see here, also does... It blinds the enemy when it hits them. Just to give them a bit of a buff. And these guys can start pushing forwards. And in fact, we're going to double time it forwards a little bit. Because I, uh, I want Karakate Peaks. So we're going to go straight into Karakate Peaks. Then uh, Valiant Sorrow. And then we're going to move on to Karakazel. And we'll then uh, send a small army to take it back up there. And we'll start working our way down here. Now I think we've got Skaven down here. But I don't know exactly. So let's enter and see where this army goes. Now with a... With his war, he should be able to deal with that army relatively simply. However, it's not going to be the easiest of battles. Because when I first go to battle with him, unless he attacks me, I probably won't get the benefit of my war. Now, what I can do is I can send my war chasing after him. There's a good chance my war will get killed if I do that. But what will also happen is the war will... Uh, definitely uh, rip a hole through them will cause a nice chunk of damage to oh, them so uh, that might well be a good thing okay mr queek queek has ended his non-aggression pact with me it's hardly surprising queek is not trustworthy at all i was never going to trust that and i'm going to be honest i was probably going to go to war with him as early as i could so who do we have up here now so karak ziffin zifflin are expanding quite well as well and I do want to keep an eye on the uh, Northern Badlands as well, just to make sure that they are not Northern, the on the top of the border Prince's lands, just to make sure they're not in too much trouble. Um, while not many people like me, I think most people are not wanting to go to war with me at the moment simply because I uh, I pose too much of a threat to them. Um, okay, keep them sweet. So that gives us a. Uh, Three turns of extra leadership, which will be useful in the battles to come. Supreme ruler of eight peaks. Sounds like a good idea. Two in one. Okay, Skarsnik is going to lead the attack on Karak Eight Peaks because it is his. It is the place he wants to take. So uh, that's going to be our, our main focus here, right? You guys can uh, go straight to there. You can double time it straight down into here. You can do a bit more recruiting. A couple more Arab boys. Okay. This is going to burn for our income, which is why I really wanted to avoid sending an army over. Now, Dragonhorn Mines is in trouble now, guys. There's really not much I can do about that. Um, I might even lose it. However, if I can get there... In fact, no, I can probably get there with a couple of armies next turn and we can drive that that army off. So that's a good thing. And then what we'll do is we'll push down here and either keep raiding in this territory to cause them to have to focus on a bit or we'll, uh, or we'll recapture uh, Galbaraz. And there's some nice territories around here I can capture uh, just as, a, as our sort of frontal bastion against the dwarves. Okay. So Nagrond is at war with Mung. Uh, I think Nagrond is suffering, actually, because I think the High Elves have uh, really pushed into Nagrond. The High Elves look to be one of the sort of big ascendant factions here. That The High Elves in the Empire seem to be very powerful, as is the Crusaders here. 
those Crusaders, the Knights of the Flame, are really expanding. I think they're doing probably as well as, if not better, than Bretonia. Um, obviously, I can't see too much over here, but it does look like some of the vampires are expanding. And oh, the Orcs, the Blue Vipers are doing well. My, uh, my brethren across the sea. So Avalon, one of the other High Elf factions, has been destroyed, which probably means it's been subsumed by the uh, other factions, unsurprisingly. Okay, let's push straight forwards into here, and you can uh, join up. And next turn, we're going to drive these guys out. These guys are still pushing for them. Okay, Mr. Skarsnick, it's time to go home. So we've got various spells here. We've got Madcap Mutt Troops, which is a... Ooh! Does it up to my ability recharge? We've got a... Got a sneaky Stealing, which uh, reduces other people's recharge rate. That's nice. Obviously, we've got my Gobbo War buff Boss here, who we uh, can uh, buff up. Okay, so uh, Skarsnik is leading the attack on Karakate Peaks. Alright, let's uh, follow up. This is a nice, easy victory now. Um, so we are just going to... Um, no, we're gonna war to it, guys, because it, it would be a, a it would be a massacre. We're gonna sack and capture there, because that's a 24k extra gold, and Skarsnik is now gonna march into Karakate Peaks. So Skarsnik has captured Karakate Peaks. We'll knock that one over. I don't want that there. Hmm. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to start rebuilding my walls. Wurzag. And Wurzag is going to move here. And in fact, I'm going to send this war to attack there as well. Okay, a little bit of levelling up for Skarsnik. So we're going to be uh, buffing up my gobbos even more, which will be very nice. Oh, that's what I want to check. I want to check up here. Ah, here is actually positive now. We're still going to keep pushing because I want it to stay very positive if I can. Let's keep pushing up my income where I can as well. And this is always good because this buffs everybody everywhere. So it's a useful thing to have actually. Because uh, it's all forces, it's not just locally, so uh... It also buffs my movement range in the region, however, for now we're going to up a, a settlement on this place's walls. Oh, you see, we're having problems here now, so let's go for this one, which should sort that out, and end turn, guys! Now, do you still have this little settlement over here? been being seized for a while. I I think they've got my war has that guys. Let's take the leadership buff and we now have that territory as well. So that is the remains of Barakvar's old territory. I know it was the Dwarven territory but it was where Barakvar was. That has now been nicely cleared for us so uh, that is that is good. Uh, we've secured our our borders here. We're potentially going to go forwards here with those two little armies because uh, while they're not as powerful as my other two armies, it's still a very nice setup they've got there. So we can still push forwards. I'm going to put the Crimson, da Crimson Killers into Grimgore's army actually because they will get a bigger, but they will get a nice buff from being part of him. And they are a really cool unit. I think they are they dual wield great axes, guys, which is a a little OTT. Um. So yeah, they are they are falling back. I need to chase them off, unfortunately, which is a bit annoying. Um, otherwise, they will come back into my territory somewhere else. So I do need to stay aware of them. 
But Karakazal is going to start being pressured now, which means it's probably going to confederate with the dwarf sometime soon. Um, at which point I will just have a great big dwarven nation to take on. Um, again. Uh, which is annoying, I preferred to not have to do that, but this happens. Okay, Skarsnik has himself a war now. Right, we are going to head over here. And we're going to head down here with our war. So we're going to press pressure here. This thing about having these wars now is we can actually spread out a little bit as well. So uh, let's up the weapon strength again. <laughs> He's going nicely. This is my uh, gobbo here. Alright. What do I want to pull out for them? Let's pull out a unit of savage orcs. Ready. Let's get moving. Okay. How are we doing up here in the mountains? Yeah, we're doing well. I need to start burning off that taint. Okay. Because I'm getting slowly gaining vampiric corruption up there, which is something I do need to do something about. So Karakaz on next turn, then Black Eye and mine, and um, obviously, uh, oh, and they have confederated. I said I thought that was going to happen when I started pressuring them. So all of the dwarves have now confederated into one quite powerful nation. Actually, that's probably me making that made that will have made them a lot harder to deal with now, guys, because obviously I have to deal with them as a one big unit rather than lots of little units. You know, sorry, rather than a couple of separate nations who wouldn't act as in sync, they will now be acting far, more, you know, far more sync. They will be far more synchronous in the way they are acting. Um, however, that does give them public negatives. Now, the thing I do want to be careful of is they could still be building an army in my north. No, I don't want a military alliance with you. You are dead. Um, so. There is no benefit from me getting a military alliance where you're already fighting people I want you to fight and you are dying. Um, no. Because up here, we, while it is being raided, they could well... Um, you know, they could well still win there. So, let's have a look at my vampire allies. Skins. I have witnessed thy kind. Many foolish mortals. I want them to take here out, but the question is, are they going to? Because this is probably still quite a nice... It is definitely still being sieged. It's just they could be building things there, so I'm a little worried about that. And scheming. Let's take Black on. Oh, damn, I left myself in that stance. I have seen the future. This will be proper good to you. Knock a couple of things over. We can always rebuild this later. So, Karak 8 Geeks Green Skin Camp, which is very nice. We get lots of nice things and we get uh, some good things for there as well, which is very nice. Um, oh, the dwarfies didn't move. I'm gonna have some fun guys so we're just gonna we're just gonna absolutely trounce this dwarven army here guys this is just straight dwarven warriors there's a few thunderers there's a few quarrelers there's nothing really here to massively worry about they've got the uh, the slayers 
but I don't really have any large units here, so that's not a huge problem. I've got my Crimson Killers here as well, who will uh, form the center of my line, and we're just going to wander up. I, I, I wish, I, what I should have done is actually moved my other guys behind, but that would have been a little too silly. And then these guys are going to start pressuring around here, raiding the Dwarven territories and capturing capturing places. Um, again, I'll, I'll be quite aggressive in the way I do it because I won't be particularly upset if I lose some territories behind because it'll probably be other greenskin tribes popping up in rebellions and I can always uh, deal with them later on. Okay, so... So they are armoured and shielded and they've got good defense, chance of defence against large foes which isn't really going to bother me. So at Grimgore is going to be uh, ripping into these dwarfs and causing a lot of damage. Um, this should be quite fun, actually, because uh, the Black Orcs should make short work of those Dwarven Warriors, actually. Oh, and I've got control of the war here as well, so we've got a lot of units on the field. So these guys, these are the ones I meant, oh, I think are really funny, because these guys are dual-wielding axes. So, uh, yeah. I like these guys who just hold one big one. These guys dual wield them, so uh, yeah, it's interesting. So these guys will form my my main line. These guys. Hang on. These guys will form a flank. So let's group these guys. So that's one flank, that's the centre, this is one flank. We've got my large units in the other flank. We'll put all of my RT together at the back here. So these guys will be my... Hmm, will be my other flank. Which is a very different type of flank. That's quite a heavy unit. And then we're going to put together a nice little uh, ray. This is going to be my... Uh, my rear flank these guys job is going to be to just charge right by and then all of the rest of these guys are archers okay the dwarves are already moving which is good Grimgore is rushing forwards all of my units are on the move now. So what we're going to do is we're going to hammer these guys into their front line. These two, this side will involve them and engage them, and the heavies will start pushing to their backs. And these guys will then, my uh, my cavalry wing will also start doing similar things. Rimgor's not going to stop. He's just going to go for it. Oops. Okay, so here goes nothing. Right, my calf can all charge into the back here. Ooh, I forgot about my archers. I don't think I really need my archers in this battle. These guys can also hammer out straight over here now. These guys can actually move around behind, so my cav is going to make short work of these guys. You can charge into the back here, so can you guys. And you guys can start doing the same. Some of you guys can go up here, but most of you guys can charge into the backs. 
So we are nicely... Basically, we have now completely surrounded them. Let's use his various buffs. Buffing everybody around me nicely. And Grimgore can go straight after their lord. And he will make short work of their lord. We got a giant spider tossing dwarfs around the place there. And our archers are all in now. So our archers are all in here shooting now. The Crimson Killers are doing their jobs and the dwarfs are the dwarfs are shattering, guys. This is it, we already have the mass route going on, guys. They are completely breaking. Oh, and this one unit of slayers, and this is the thing about slayers. Slayers don't break. So I will have to kill every last one of them, but uh that's not going to take as long at this point, this rate. They have a... Uh, how many... They have no Slayers left. That's it. We now have the Master out, guys. They are gone. Why hasn't it ended yet? Oh, we still have some Slayers here. We have three Slayers left. Now they're gone. My giant spider ate the slayers. And we have Dwarfs trying to run away here, but uh, they're not really succeeding. He's not. He's giving it. He's trying to fight. He's trying not to run away because he's completely surrounded by my, my guys. And he just got stabbed by a goblin. And his mates are now running away. Okay, so that was a, a nice clean battle, guys. A nice clean victory there as we are... Uh, destroyed that invasion force not quite to a man but uh you know 874 kill losses for what 100 basically just over 100 i lost so uh between my three armies knob nails i don't think knob nails even even went onto the battlefield uh so the crimson killers got 79 kills grimgore only got 30 even though he's the first in but he was mostly focused on their lord but I had so many people there sharing in the kills, guys. That's hardly surprising. And let's uh, take the leadership bonus. And we have completely smashed that army now. So this is a nice thing here. We've got this marsh, which kind of covers my flank nicely. So we are going to push out here. And we are going to start raiding. Um, we are going to start raiding into here and we will take Galbaz, which will secure this flank for us while we're pushing over here as well. Okay, and uh, we are actually going to end this one here, guys. We're in a nice position now. However, we are a little spread. If they bring all of their might into one position, you know, if the dwarfs bring a doom stack up here, for example, all of their armies up through here... I will be in trouble. So what I ideally want to do is I want to want to make quick work of these territories so I can start bringing the things together. Now, fortunately, I think the dwarfs down here, these aren't really traditional dwarfish territories, so they will be suffering. And these are places where there's still quite a lot of corruption in these territories, which they're having to deal with as well. So uh, if I can take out the mountains here, I think I've pretty much broken the dwarfs. Okay, anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it.